If you're on the internet at all, but especially if you follow artists, illustrators, or other designers on social media like I do, you've likely seen this meme floating around, or at least a variation of it. What's the joke here? <laughs> the joke is, bless your sweet little heart, keep dreaming, but your passion ain't helping you because this is bad design. Now, there's a reason this meme exists. From my <clears throat> extensive research through dusty tomes and journeys to far off underground magical libraries, I've gained the secret inside knowledge that this meme basically was made by actual professional graphic designers poking fun at other people who think they can do their job, graphic design, better or at least as good as the pros. If you're a graphic designer, you went to school for likely at least four, but probably more years, you know multiple theories of design and color, and you've spent hours upon hours upon hours in studios honing your talents just to have your middle manager, who probably went to business school, either say they don't like your design or to try and come up with something better. Some folks in the business world don't appreciate the craft and skill of folks like artists and writers, and that's kind of infuriating, so don't be that middle manager. On the other hand, sometimes you're in a workplace that doesn't have a graphic designer and you, who maybe failed an elementary school art class, need to put something together that won't embarrass you and your whole team. Today, I'm going to help you learn how to avoid being this meme. I've never been to art school, but I have studied visual rhetoric as a part of both my undergrad and graduate work, so while I can't magic you into being an illustrator or an actual graphic designer, especially not in like five minutes, I can at least help you learn how to execute decent document design. I'm going to talk about two types of tools that feed into good document design, the principles of good design and the components to which you apply those principles. Let's start with the components and then get to the principles. By components, I mean the things that make up whatever medium you're designing with. If you're working with a print document, that means the literal page. If you're making a slideshow, I mean the slides. If you're making a website, I mean the website. What goes onto a printed page? Well, you can put images on there, you can add colors, you can put words on there in different shapes and sizes. Same thing with slideshows and websites. Basically, when you're designing something, as you are working with each component, you use the design principles to make choices about those components. So let's get to the principles so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, different design help books will talk about these principles in slightly different ways, but I like to use the CRAP acronym as a mnemonic device to remember them because I'm super corny and I love to say, use the CRAP principles of design to make your documents not look like CRAP. So what does CRAP stand for? Contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Okay, what do each of those things mean? Contrast means you make things look different. Repetition means you make things look the same. Alignment means how things line up on the page, and proximity means which things are close together or which things are far apart. You want to balance these elements with each other in order to have a decent looking design. So let's look at the meme again in terms of these principles and components. In terms of contrast, in some ways there's not enough and there's also too much. The text in the background don't contrast enough so it's really not easy to read, but also each of the colors used in the different components, the gray background color, the red font, the green frog clip art, they all contrast too much. There's no repetition there across these colors, except maybe in the frog's tongue and the font color, but it's so small, it doesn't contrast. You do get repetition in the text in that it's all the same color and all the same font, but those components, the color and font, don't repeat anywhere else in the design. As for the alignment, well, there is none. It looks like someone just threw the text and picture up on the background with zero concern for how the elements relate to one another. Same with proximity. The frog and the text aren't really together, but they're also not really apart. With proximity, you want to group things that relate to each other, and maybe the reason they're not really proximal is because the text and the clip art don't really seem to relate. There's one other thing that goes into the joke which isn't really covered by what I've talked about so far, and that's context appropriateness. The font, background, and illustration used in the meme are not really appropriate for a professional setting, at least in terms of current design trends. The cloudy background is maybe appropriate for a photographer's backdrop in the 1990s. The clip art would be completely appropriate in an elementary school classroom. And the papyrus font, 
Well, I'm, I'm sure there's somewhere that the papyrus, papyrus font would be appropriate, but I'm not really sure where. Graphic designers don't really like papyrus font. They also don't like Comic Sans, but again, Comic Sans is actually super appropriate. Get it? Super appropriate. In the place it originated from, comic books. And actually, it's apparently easier to read if you have dyslexia. So we've used these tools to critique a piece of visual media. How do we use them to create a piece of visual media? Rather than starting from scratch, why don't we take the meme itself and see if we can make it better, make it better adhere to the principles we've just discussed. Okay, so let's see if we can take this, you know, goofy meme and make it look a little bit better. Um, it's not going to look great when we're done because its whole actual real purpose is to be a joke on the internet about bad design. Um, and we're not actually going to be putting it into any sort of real context. Uh, we're just using it to practice uh, working with components and principles of design. So it, it probably won't look great, uh, spoiler alert, but um, we can make it look better according to the principles of design. So the first thing we wanna do is remove the background for two reasons. One, that will help, uh, help us give the text more contrast uh, so that it'll be easier to read. Um, if we just give it a plain white background. And two, uh, you can see here that the frog, the picture of the frog itself has a white background. And that just happens when um, you use a um, some kind of an image that doesn't have a transparent background. So let's just get rid of this background. Nope. And um, now let's uh, work with the text to try and give it both uh, more repetition and more contrast. So let's just go ahead and make the um, the color black that will help it contrast with the white background even more and it will I, I don't want to try and play around with color matching this green frog we could also use green um, but I don't want to do that because that would take too much time and black is easier um, but so we have black outline in the frog's uh, eyes just a black outline of the frog and black in the frog's mouth so that's enough contrast or enough repetition to be getting on with um, okay so uh, now let us um, choose a different font because again, papyrus isn't really a, a, a professionally appropriate font. Let's just use, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. we can even just use Arial. Sure, why not? Uh, let's make it a little bit smaller so that we can <clears throat> align it. So you can see how um, guidelines, guided grid lines show up on um, on PowerPoint. That's to help you align things. We're going to make it a little bit smaller too. Uh, and so that way we can put, we can, we can line up with, um, with the text. And I'm going to put it on the other side just because I want to. Um, because I think if we're trying to make this look sort of professional, what this to me looks like is, hey, we've got a slogan here and a, and a company logo. And we'll also make uh, the frog a little bit smaller too, and then maybe bring this uh, font size up. So um, here we are both aligning the frog and the, the slogan, if you will, and we are making them more proximal to each other because in this fake scenario we've set up, the frog is the, um, the logo and this is the, the slogan. Um, so this doesn't look great by any means. It's really plain. The clip art is still super inappropriate. If we actually wanted to pretend this was a logo, we should probably use some sort of vector art because that's really popular right now. Um, but, uh, you know, it looks better than it did. We've taken a couple of steps in, in the direction of making uh, something that's more professionally appropriate. All right, there you have it. Okay, so we've taken a goofy internet meme and made it look slightly more professionally appropriate. Let's see if we can take just a plain piece of text and make it actually look kind of good. Um, maybe not something, definitely not something that, a, that an actual graphic designer or a layout artist would do, but um, that looks decent and looks, looks better than just what we have here, um, <clears throat> just your standard text. Um, 
And what I'm going to talk about now is um, we're going to talk about, again, the design components and the design principles. Um, so the components that you see on the page before you are basically text, um, but there's more to it than that. We have the font, uh, which is right now Calibri 11. It's black. Um, it is set at a particular spacing. Uh, da, 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 da. We've got, I think this is 1.15 spacing. Yes, it is. With, a, with I think, an additional 0.6 um, uh, extra space in between paragraphs after the paragraph. We also have the way that the, um, the text is aligned. This is left alignment, uh, which basically means the uh, left side has a hard edge while the right side remains jagged. Uh, there are also center alignments, uh, which mm, body text, full paragraphs does not, it's hard to read, um, but it's appropriate for invitations. Right alignments, which um, in languages that go from left to right is best when used sparingly um, and certainly not, uh, it's not the easiest to read uh, for body text, but if you have, um, you know, headings or something like that, it might work there. Um, but in languages that read right to left, it's perfectly appropriate. Um, and then you have full justification and um, this you see in, um, you know, a lot of print media. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and depending on the actual size of the print media, it works. But on things like reports and papers on your typical eight and a half by 11 page, uh, if you're in the US, it doesn't always look as good as I think people think it does. Uh, because if you'll notice, when we toggle back, the, the, the lines have to move. This line here has to stretch a little bit and increase the space in between each word. Uh, and that can make it a little bit more difficult to read. So uh, for body text in the English language, left aligning is typically your best bet. Um, okay, so now that we've got that taken care of, those are the components we're working with. We can use uh, this feature in Microsoft Word called styles, and I think other word processors may have it as well, um, to sort of automatically apply um, the the different effects or um, the, the, the different um, aspects of the components that we choose, different font size, different font color, different font font um, itself. Uh, we can use the styles to uh, format the font and then quickly apply whatever piece of formatting to uh, lots of different parts of the text. So let me show you what I mean. Um, this is a basic, um, basic paragraph. It is currently um, the normal formatting for normal and typically in this um, Using word styles, it means that's your body text, that's your default. Um, and so let's make a few changes to this. Uh, instead of Calibri, um, <clears throat> let's use another, uh, what we call sans serif font. Um, let's just use Arial, actually. Um, what is a sans serif font? Actually, let's change it to Times New Roman, which is a serif font. Serif. Uh, a serif font just means that a font has serifs, which are these little feet on the bottom of the, the letters. Uh, in print media, um, a literal physical, like a, a physical book, a physical piece of newspaper, this works really well because the little serifs form a little line that, you're, that helps your eye follow the text. On screens, however, in a lower resolution environment, it can become more difficult to read. So on screens, like a good principle for when to use a serif, and when to use a sans serif for your body font, your, your paragraph font, is if you're designing for an online setting, uh, sans serif is typically a good bet. If you're designing for a, a print setting, serif is a good bet. Um, but there are exceptions and um, there are just serif and sans serif fonts that are also readable in the opposite uh, scenario, but um, just something to keep in mind. Okay, so we've got Arial. Now let's go up here to styles right click on normal and click update normal to match selection and that turns all the rest of my font because it is uh or all the rest of my text because it has been formatted um as normal um to the thing that i just turned this text into it's it's, it's now all arial 11 black font okay so um now let's play around with contrast. So we've got repetition, the whole document, all the text looks the same. Let's play around with contrast. Let's use a different font. Um, one easy way to use contrast in headings is to um, use a sans serif font for your heading and that will automatically contrast with your body font. 
Um, however, I'm going to use, because the Arial family of fonts has this uh, Arial black font, I'm just going to use it. Um, it contrasts with the Arial font because the letters are much, much thicker. Um, these are, are much, much thinner. Um, while we're here, let's talk very briefly about a few other types of fonts. Um, let's look at this one. This is called Playbill. Um, this technically is maybe a serif font because it has feet on the letters, but this is actually what we call a decorative font. Here's another one, Jokerman. This is a decorative font, and if you can guess why it's called a decorative font, uh, it's because it works best um, used sparingly, sparingly as decoration, maybe on a poster or something like that. Typically, they look really cool, but they're more difficult to read, and you definitely don't want to use it in, say, uh, the body of your text. That's really hard to read. Okay, so where were we, Ariel? All right, so let's uh, use Arial Black. Oh, wait, one more type of font. Let's see if I can find a good one really quickly. Do, 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 do. Here's a good one. Uh, Black Adder ITC. This one, what does it look like? Kind of looks like old timey handwriting. These are called script fonts because they look like old timey scripts. Um, maybe not old timey, but they, they look like scripts. It looks like a hand wrote it. Um, that's what it's designed to look like. Um, and again, these are appropriate sparingly in the correct context or in an appropriate context, um, like invitations. A lot of wedding invitations have script font and that's perfectly appropriate. It looks really fancy. Um, but uh, as a heading in a professional text or even as um, uh, actual <laughs> body text, that's really hard to read. Um, so we typically uh, don't we don't do that and we don't use script fonts in body text or in heading text typically um, i'm not going to say never ever because there may be a context where it would be appropriate but you know it's a good rule of thumb all right so let's also change the color up a little bit that adds a little bit more contrast um let's um let's see i think that's good for contrast oh another thing we can do is uh we can um play around with the case um so we could make it all caps we could make it small caps. Small caps is kind of cool. Um, we could make it all lowercase caps if you're going for a particular effect, but let's stick with small caps here. <clears throat> okay, so we've done that. Now let's play around a little bit with proximity. Uh, proximity um, doesn't often... It, I think it's one of the principles that makes it sort of like, oh, well, it makes... You, you just do what makes sense. I'm going to put a heading near a uh, near the paragraph that it's supposed to. I'm just going to put it on top of the section it applies to and like, yeah, but you can also make it slightly more proximal by removing that extra space underneath. Um, and that really shows us, okay, here, here's the heading. <clears throat> here's the section that we're talking about. I just think it looks good. Um, so this is a heading one. Now let us right click, update heading one to match selection. And there we go. All of our heading ones, everything, every piece of text that we select um, or that we add heading one um, will now have that formatting. There you go. Okay, so now let's play around with a heading two. When you're using headings in a document, you want to have both repetition and contrast across the different levels of headings. So heading one means this is a big, big, big section. Heading two means this is a smaller section within the big, big section of heading one. So let's also make it Arial Black. Let's make it blue, but let's keep it, yeah, just a little bit smaller and let's don't make it um, small caps. Okay, so there you have it. Oh, let's also remove space after paragraph. Okay, so heading two is differentiated from heading one. We can also add <clears throat> a heading three. For really, really long documents, you may have a heading level three, a smaller section within a slightly bigger section within a big, big, big section. Um, but so let's actually make heading three look a little bit closer to um, our body text because it's such a small section. Let's just maybe use regular Arial um, and add, um, maybe make it bold and make it blue. So you can very see this is the big section, this is a slightly smaller section, and this is the smallest section. Um, so you, you can go sort of, you know, all the way down with that. Um, however many levels of section that you need, I wouldn't recommend going on uh, forever in terms of uh, uh, how many levels of heading you have. Um, but you could if you needed to, um, but you probably don't. Um, that signifies, that, that probably signals a less than stellar organization. 
But okay, so here is what we've done. We have we haven't even changed the background color of the document, uh, which is probably a good idea um, because you've got good contrast with the black on white. Um, we but we have simply added headings and formatted those headings um, appropriately. We've also changed the body font, um, but this document looks you know a little bit better than what we than what we started out with. Um, <clears throat> there are other sorts of uh, things you can play around in uh, document design. Um, if you have uh, an, an image, um, you want to make sure, I think I have an image in this document. Yeah, so here's, this is my script for the graph for this video. Um, if you have an image, you want to make sure that your uh, image, um, so let's actually cut that, uh, that your image is proximal to the thing that it's talking about. So let's actually put it up here under the text for heading one. Now I can have it just like this, um, or I can try and make it even more proximal with text wrapping. Uh, let's make it square and then put it up here. Um, the thing you have to be careful with here is that sometimes when you play around with this, Microsoft Word does really weird things with the edges or, um, if you do this in a document, you want to be careful about when you submit it um, to whomever you're submitting it to, whether that's in a professional context or a classroom context, um, save as a PDF and send it to them because individual settings on individual computers um, can make a .docx change the formatting from computer to computer. Um, whereas a PDF, you're, you have more control over, I've put this formatting on it, save as a PDF, it's going to look the same when you open it on your computer. So, um, but that, uh, I think that's about it for, for what we're gonna do in this, in this document here. Um, we've added headings, we've put a, uh, a figure, an, an image into our, um, into our document and made it proximal to the thing that it's talking about. Um, I think that's about it for now. Uh, so we've got good contrast and good contrast, both contrast and repetition between the body font and the and the heading fonts. And we've made them, we've aligned everything on the left. We have um, also made them proximal to the sections to which they apply. Uh, and we've also played around a little bit with this image here. So um, that's it for now. And uh, now you too have this power of uh, not fully professional graphic design, but you know, making a text document look slightly more professional. Have fun. So there you have it. We used the craft principles of design to help us choose the font size, the font color, the font itself, and the placement of the components on the canvas. Now you too can go forth in your projects and make something relatively decent looking when you need to. But please hire actual designers when it's appropriate and when you can and pay them well. Same goes for writers. Bye!